All right, so here we go. I'm gonna share my screen with you guys. Here we are, snatch progressions. So take a look at this right here. Let's see. Oh, no, no, don't go, not that far. I hate that my mouse disappears in this. That's clearly not a, it's like a flaw here. Okay, anyway, so snatch progressions. Here, here are the, oh, really, it's five positions. Okay, so to, um, as you, uh, I feel like most weightlifters, we don't talk about the starting position or the receiving position because they're given to you. Of course, you have to start somewhere and you have to end somewhere, but I'm, I really want to break this down. So there's this, and, and, and we really think about the first pull, the second pull, and the third pull. But I want to break this down for you guys. So in the snatch, and even in the clean, this applies to the clean, but we're talking about the snatch specifically here. There's the starting position, right? Then we merge, we make our way into the first pull. First pull goes into the second pull. Second pull goes into third pull. And the third pull goes into the receiving position. Um, don't, uh, here's, here's my thing with the word pool. Um, and uh, you guys have heard me say this many times, the, we don't, yes, we're pulling from the floor, but it's never, it's not a literal, it's not a literal pool. The arms maintain this passive extension and it's you pushing down into the floor with the legs and leading with the shoulders. The arms are merely levers holding onto a barbell. That's, that's why it's called a pull. Um, but really you're not doing any pulling until you venture into the, like the end of the second pull. So uh, I think it's a, it's a common misconception for us to think, especially when you're tired, right? And you're, you're in the middle of a wad to rip the barbell off the floor, hips stay high and you end up, uh, you end up pulling with the back and the arms and that's exhausting. You don't want that. You want to drive with the legs, keep the arms long, scoop it and then get it. And then you can start pulling, but you have several steps before you need to hit before you actually, actually start literally pulling on the bar. So um, let's take a look at this here. Take a look at that. So in this picture, there are four, of these motions here. I'll give you the, the starting position, position is in there, the first pull, the second pull, and the third pull. And I wish I could, let me hold on, let me, I hate that it's doing that. Um, oh no, I, yeah, yeah, all four are in there, good, okay, cool. So take a look at this. I'm not gonna tell you what is what, but all, all five of these are contained in this series of shots. And again, I like, you know, these, these uh, snapshots are great because it's telling you the whole story here. Take a look at how he never in this movement is he pausing at all. Maybe ex except for the very first picture, right? That's the setup. And then as soon as the barbell leaves the ground, it's constant, fluid, aggressive, upward motion. And he's setting himself up for that to receive the barbell in the overhead position. We're gonna revisit this later. I wanna see if you guys can actually, after today's uh, chat, after today's PowerPoint, if you can uh, pinpoint, not even pinpoint, because if you really, like, like I was telling you about, they all merge, right? So two, four, so it's like anywhere between two to three pictures can contain one of these, right? First pull, second pull, third pull. Not, it's not just one single picture that can tell you. Well, you know it can, but the better you are, the more you understand about these positions, the more you can uh, say like, oh, this picture, this picture, and this picture is this pool. This picture, this picture, and this picture is beginning to merge into this pool. So let's move, let's move on. All right, so the receiving position, right? That this is the this is the first one. This is the one everyone's like, oh, of course, there's the receiving position. We start. Um, oh, oh, here, here. Um, I also mix these. I mix them, so it's not starting position, first pull, second. It's not in consecutive order. I randomized it in an effort to get you to really think about what it is, what's going on here. So instead of just handing it to you, like here, 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 they're random. 
You, you need to think about this. So the receiving position. So what, what do I have here? General description, overhead squat, semi in parentheses, because remember wherever the barbell is at after your drive, you need to pull yourself under to receive it in this overhead squat position, right? Remember, we know that the overhead squat, right? Let me, here, real quick, real quick. Overhead squat here. This is the receiving position of a snatch. And that is why, well, I mean, depending upon what the coach is trying to achieve, but most typically an overhead, overhead squat is prescribed to strengthen that motion, right? And the same applies to um, a clean. A front squat strengthens the receiving portion of a clean. So the lifter will push up against the barbell in accordance to the barbell position, meaning if it's a power snatch and the barbell is received and it's fairly light um, or even heavy for you and you're just that strong and you're able to get the barbell to get to really get nice and, and, and tall, then you need to get underneath that barbell, push up and, and, and prevent the barbell from coming down onto you. And that takes perfect timing. Not perfect, but uh, it's a very, it's a, it's a, it's a, you have a small window to get underneath this barbell. Let's say you um, drove, let's say you surprised yourself and you gave such an aggressive drive and the barbell shoots up into the, the air and you do down so quickly that the barbell is still traveling up, but you already, you're, already, you're already kind of too far down. That's when the barbell comes over and then gravity takes over and it starts to crush you down. So you need to meet it, right? And there's also weightlifters who are so uh, precise that they can get into their position, drive, and it almost looks like the barbell shot up and then suddenly you blink and they're in the bottom of squat. That happens very rarely though. Um, so remember, wherever the barbell ends up at, you need to receive it. So vertical alignment, you're actively punching up against the bar and sitting into the bottom of the squat at the same, nearly at the same time, right? Ideally, as soon as you get under, you punch up and then you start, uh, once you have the bar securely overhead, you start to write it down into the squat position. You need to stay tight. Air pressure is used to stabilize the torso. So you guys know that in the beginning of a snatch or even a clean, any weightlifting movement, a back squat, a, a deadlift, you take a deep breath. And this midsection, 360 pressure. So all from all sides, you need that trunk to be nice and stable. And we talked about that on the last class, I believe, how to stabilize the, the torso. Um, and if the torso is not stabilized with that deep breath and that outward expenditure, then it gets soft and you start to lose energy. And you, even, though if you, even though you manage to get underneath the barbell, punch up and lock the elbows out, if the midsection is tight, then you, you will lose the lift. Absorb it. Allow the barbell to push you down into the bottom position. And um, what, I, what I mean by that is, like I was kind of saying up here in this, as soon as you actively get under and punch up, you need to already be writing it down. So it's wherever you meet the barbell, wherever it's at, write it down into a full squat. Um, and that all needs to happen kind of together, right? Very quickly. Your priorities for the snatch are stability and security. Um, and that is most, it's common, uh, uh, well, first let me say this. Uh, this is more like textbook, right? This, is, this applies to the majority. However, there are some lifters that can get into, you know, insanely heavy snatches, snatch it and just bounce out of the hole like nothing. For most, that is not, that is not the situation. Those are very special circumstances. The coach and this athlete have probably worked on that for a very long time. They've probably been lifting for a long time too. Across the board though, as soon as you get under, punch up, tight midsection, light it down. You wanna sit in the hole in that bottom position or however long it takes you to secure the lift. So in the snatches, uh, not when it's light, more so when it's heavy. So let's say you guys have a wad one day and you guys are maxing out on the snatch or you're on the platforms with me and we're getting heavy. You don't want to bounce out of the hole of the snatch. You want to sit down there and make sure you have it and it's secure. 
and then we recover. So that's the receiving position. Um, let's watch this video right here. Uh, I'm gonna, it's in every, nearly every uh, um, slide I have for you. I'm just gonna let you watch it. It's about a two minute video. It's good repetition, one. Two, I'm not gonna tell you what position it is or where this specific position is. I just want you to watch it. So here we go. So all the positions we're covering are in this video. All right, so that's the receiving position. Next one. The starting position. So the starting position, I have a lot of bullets here because the starting position is often overlooked. And it's overlooked because, well, I don't know, for several reasons. But uh, I want us to go over it because there are a lot of little things that need to occur in order for the starting position to be successful. So if the starting position fails, it's not impossible, but very difficult to recover from a sloppy starting position. So uh, let's look at that. Uh, your heels are approximately hip width. Again, this is kind of more textbook. The taller you are, or maybe you have, um, limited range of motion, uh, that changes for you. Maybe not, maybe not to an exaggerated um, position, but it does vary for uh, weightlifters of various shapes and sizes. The standard is hip width. Your feet are turned out moderately, so you don't want your toes facing forward. The toes are slightly pointed out. The barbell is approximately over the balls of the feet. Touching the shins normally for most people. Your arms are extended, so they're fully, fully out, internally rotated. Knees are flared out to the sides. Shoulders are over the bar. The lifter's weight is balanced throughout the foot in the starting position, so big toe, big toe, little toe, heel. Natural back curvature, slightly exaggerated. So if you see uh, when someone pulls from the ground, if you look at them from the back, um, they have that. The chest is flared up a little bit, right? The chest is flared up. When you look at them from the side, you can see the lower back kind of curved. See, let me show you guys right now. So it's normally around, something around this. A little bit of lower back curvature. Still an engaged section, though. You don't want to overdo it. You're not, not flaring open the rib cage so much so that uh, you're, they're all that pressure is pushing forward. Um, so trunk is pressurized always. The minute the bar, the minute you set up for the snatch and the barbell, 
and you take for the starting position and you go through all this series of movements, you need to maintain that internal pressure. Um, active engaged type position. What do I mean by that? I mean that before you pull, before the barbell, before the plates leave the ground, you need to already be pulling up on the barbell. So active engaged type position, meaning you don't, except for a very few lifters out there who are professional uh, and have practiced this over and over and over, it's rare, it's, you should not ever walk up to the barbell and just pull from the ground. You need to find this starting position, pull up on it, and then, and then push down with the legs and lead with the shoulders. Um, the way you can tell is like, uh, how do I say this? Let's say you, from the ground, you wanna engage the barbell, so slightly pull up just to the point where maybe the barbell, the plates uh, might possibly come off the ground if it's light enough. But you and the barbell need to be one unit. As soon as it comes off the ground, you guys are no longer separate entities. You guys need to move with each other. Specifically, the body moves around the barbell, right? We want this barbell to get into this overhead position, specifically with the snatch. And it's the body that morphs into these positions to make that happen. Um, I think the, the classic sign of not being engaged with the barbell in the starting position is when I hear this little clink. I, you can see it too. It's like the body jerks and then the barbell moves. You should never do that. The minute you pull the barbell off the ground, uh, the minute the body moves, the barbell should be moving with it, right? So not a, a not, they should, I should not see two separate movements here. Um, Let's think of this as a deadlift, just for a second. If, let's say you have a really, really heavy deadlift in front of you, you wouldn't, you're not supposed to, you shouldn't do this. You don't just pull on it, right? You want, you get into this nice engaged position, you prepare for it, pull on it maybe so much so that the bar starts to bend, and then you start to take it off the floor. The same applies here in the snatch or even in the clean. Pull up on the barbell so that there's tension with, between you and the barbell and then take it off the floor. So starting position. Um, do we, uh, now let's move forward. I'm not even gonna show you guys this video. I want you guys to really think about the pictures. There we go. Oh no, there we go. All right, third pool. So what have we covered so far? The receiving position starting position now we're now we're uh, covering the third pool so this is three of five movements we're discussing here or third or three of five positions so on the third pool you're going to relocate the athlete will transition the body downward into the receiving position by pulling and turning over so remember i was telling you uh from the ground Oh, it's getting a little confusing now, even for just mixing it up. Okay, so this is the only position we pull on the barbell. And that's only, uh, here, I have the notes right here. But first, finish the extension. So yes, you are pulling the body down into the receiving position. Turn it over, pull, 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 pull. Get into the scarecrow position, turn it over. But first, you absolutely must finish the extension. We're gonna watch the video in this one, and I'll I'll cover the extension because it's that important. We got we went over it in the mid hang, uh, the talk of the mid hang position. So remember the arms are staying long, active extension, right? You get into this power position, you drive with the legs, the barbell starts to travel up, and then you can start pulling on it. But that's after you finish the extension. That's imperative. If you start pulling on the barbell with the arms prior to finishing an extension, um, you are interfering with all this energy you've created with the legs. You are taking, the barbell will, be, will, will not reach a high position because you are pulling with the arms, especially if it's heavy. There's no way you can pull a barbell into the overhead position with the arms if it's heavy. All right, aggressive connection. Actively pull yourself under the barbell, but notice that's the second bullet. Take a look at the first one finish the extension. We're gonna stay connected with the barbell. 
by pulling on it after a full extension, you can turn it over. So you'll get into this nice scarecrow position right here. Turn it over, elbows go from their highest position possible. Remember, we're in that scarecrow position. Continue pulling, continue pulling, continue pulling, push up. So it's all happening for the third pull. Let's, uh, let's watch this video. I'll, um, there we go. And I'll show you specifically the third pull portion. And this is good to watch over and over. These, all these cues here are things that should happen. Maybe initially you have to constantly remind yourself, but over time, they just happen. You walk up to the barbell and it's memorization. Your body knows. So um, you should you should already know what, what position this is. This is a given. This is an easy point. So he's about to demonstrate that this first bullet here. Finish the extension, and that's when those dots all align. Look at those arms, passive extension. Take a look, right there. That's what I mean by finish your extension. Those four dots are there to show you his ankles, his knees, his hips, and the shoulders are all aligned right there. And look, look at those toes. He's pushing down into the floor. Arms are still semi, uh, actively, you know, in straight here. He's not quite yet pulling on the barbell. Uh, and this, I think this is an excellent, exa excellent example of uh, how I was talking about how all these positions, they merge. So he went from one position, now going into the third pool. So take a look. So he finishes extension here. His legs are straight, straight up. And he's going to pull himself down right there. This is the third pull. <laughs> oh man, dang it. That's us. Uh, Watch this. Full extension. All right, there it is, third pool. First pool. What have we done? Let's, let's do a quick recap. So here you go, receiving position, starting position. The third pool, not the first pool. So this is four, the four out of five positions we're talking about. The first pool, set yourself up for success. The lifter will position the barbell and body from the floor to the middle thigh, which is the second, the beginning of the second pool. So, I, and I add that note, second pool, just to kind of, you know, remind, remind you, yes, there are, um, you know, specific pools, I mean, positions here, obviously we're talking about them, but they merge. So again, from the floor, the lifter will position the barbell and the body from the floor to the middle thigh, roughly. Uh, I have a note here, smooth operator, active continuous tension. Uh, that goes back to active engaged type position, right, in the starting position. We need you to be engaged, never from the ground, 
if, if, if this description here has you saying that you need to position yourself from the barbell, you need to position the body in the barbell from the floor to the middle thigh, then you cannot um, just yank it off. You need to be engaged. Pull up on the barbell, be ready to take this barbell off the ground. Push the floor away. Lead with the shoulders, maintain the back angle. Uh, we'll go over that, I'll show you right now. Um, so I kind of think of you're going in opposite ways, right? The barbell, we want the barbell to go up and we want the lower legs to go down. And you guys are familiar with this movement. You do it all the time. You probably just don't, you're not aware that you're doing it. And we went over this with the, um, the movement of uh, like a, a mid hang snatch jump. Let me grab a PVC real quick. So I'm exaggerating this motion. Let's see, let me go quick. I'm exaggerating this motion, but what I mean by push the floor away is exactly this. Take a look. So if I, if I have a snatch grip on the ground, in the starting position, I'm going to drive with my legs, push the ground away, so that way my body can go up. That's how you push the ground away. Now, let me keep my feet connected to the ground now. I still exert that same aggressive push into the ground. And this time, let me keep my toes planted because I want to exert that energy into the barbell, right? Same thing. So when a coach is yelling at you, whether it's me or any coach in the gym and they're telling you to drive, 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 that's what they're telling you to do. They want you to drive with your legs into the ground so that the barbell, so you can create this, this energy that is required for the barbell to start traveling up. Let me get back to my screen here. Uh, okay, okay. Um, push the floor away, lead with the shoulders. If I look at you from the side, the shoulders should always be, right? We know this is from the starting position. The shoulders should always be higher than the hips. There should be a, a clear angle between the two. The higher the hips go, excuse me, the more, the less energy you can put in, to, uh, you can create with the legs and the more back, you end up swinging the back. Barbell will end up jumping out in front of you. So you're one, you're one part pushing the ground with the legs. The other part is leading with the shoulders, right? Because shoulders are, your arms are connected. They're holding the barbell. That's how we get the barbell to travel the opposite way. Lead with the shoulders, push down with the legs. Um, in this first pull, you want to clear the path. Knees are pushed back and are flared outward. So I, I think, you know, sometimes we need a comparison. In the deadlift, how do we set up for the deadlift? We set up for the deadlift by pushing the knees back and the shins are vertical from the beginning. In the snatch, in the weightlifting movement, we don't want that. If you, if you begin that way, the barbell will shoot out. So you need to, as soon as the barbell comes off the floor, you pull it into the body. So it's almost, if I was looking at you from the side, there would be a, a slight angle, right? So the barbell starts like at the balls of the feet and the minute it leaves the ground, you bring it to, into the body, to the knees. And in order for that to happen, the knees need to be go back and flared out. Again, arms are passively extended. We don't want to start, we don't want that elbow to break because you start interfering with the, the energy you're trying to create. So um, let's, uh, let's take a look here. I'm gonna show you this position. All right, 
bar is touching the shins, right, right. Arms are actively extended. Shoulders out in front of the bar, 10 to 20 degrees is, knees are over the toes. Oh, look at this right here. So we, we've talked about this before. Um, shoulders are above the hips. See that, see that relationship? When you start to break the barbell off the ground, you need to maintain this angle here. You don't want the hips to swing up and the shoulders to stay fixed. Then you end up, then that's taking all the, the load into the back. You wanna maintain this, this angle here. If you can maintain this relationship between the shoulders and the hips, you'll be in the right position for the legs to drive. He's looking forward, always looking forward. Here's that back position, that lower lumbar curve. Look at that right there. You see how the knees are pushed out. They flared out to the sides and the shins are vertical. So he started, he started here, right. Notice his knees are pushed forward. His, his knees are, are clearly out in front of the barbell right here. When the barbell starts to go from the ground up into the body, once it starts leaving the floor, they need to flare out more and be pushed back. Oh, dang it. So that that way, he's clearing that path that we need for the barbell to travel up. If you do not push the knees out to the sides and back, then the barbell will scrape the shins on the way up and even hit the knees. You hit the knees, you now, we just basically blocked your next position. Um, sure, you can probably recover from it. I guess it depends on how heavy the lift is. But uh, we don't want any, once the barbell gets moving, we don't want it to stop for, for any reason. All right. Here we go, second pull. This is the last one. And then we'll get into your, your quiz. A little. Second pull, the highest power. The lifter will position the barbell on the body from the middle thigh into the scarecrow position. And it's called the highest power because it's within the second pull. The, the legs, the body creates the spike of energy that, it was, that is required, the tremendous spike of energy that is required for the barbell to travel up so you can get into this scarecrow position. Again, arms are continued to remain passively extended. We don't want to interfere with that, that leg drive. You're gonna punch down with the legs. Legs will punch down through the floor and that needs to be aggressive. Remember, we're trying to get this barbell that has X amount of weight on it to travel up as high as we possibly can. And if you're soft about that drive, then the barbell is not gonna get very far. We're gonna scoop it specifically with the, um, the snatch. It's easier to, to, to produce the scooping motion with the hips. In the clean, depending upon your shape and size, it might only be like upper middle thigh. Remember in the snatch, we want the grip to be wide enough that the hips will always make full contact with the, with the, the barbell will always make full contact with the crease of the hips. And I'll show you that. Uh, stay connected, uh, the barbell um, into the scarecrow position. So here there's a moment um, where sometimes more so with like a novice or beginner weightlifter, where they talk about the barbell does this floating motion. Um, I understand what they're trying to say, that they've given so much energy into, put into the barbell that it's flow, it's, it's coming up effortlessly. You don't want that though. You need to be actively pulling on the barbell. So remember I was telling you, you've given a full extension, barbell starts to travel up, then you can start pulling in on it because you want to end up in this nice, scare, this high scarecrow position. And that's what the elbows in their highest position possible. Um, the barbell should never float. You should always be aware of where it's at and where it's going to be. You, should, you need to be ahead of it. So uh, let's, let's watch this real quick. I'm gonna show you. In fact, I'll go back and show you examples of the other ones too. I think that's fair. All right. 
right, let me do, 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 here we go, here we go. So that's a, that was already a specific lift there. At this current position, two positions were shown to you. Here's another one coming up. Your back should, should have maintained that arch from the starting position. No, oh, dang it. Hold on, let me get there again. There we go. So, This is an example of the second pool, starting from here, roughly. Because where does it begin, roughly? The middle thigh. This is when he creates all that power. He punches down in the floor with the legs. Boom, up, 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 up. Barbell travels up. And then it turns into another portion of lift. Notice he's freezing in all these positions because they're very specific. So let's do, um, let's do a quick little recap real quick. Let's start, let's start at the top. Actually, let's look at this. Can you tell me, or can you tell yourself in your head where those five positions are at in this series of pictures. I'll give you a minute just to look it over. They are all in there. What do we think? Let me, um, oh, come on. Let me get out of this real quick. Stop. I want to see your faces. Let me look at everyone. <laughs> what, uh, do we, I'm going to, um, well, you, I want to unmute you guys. You just tell me who, who thinks they can tell me what the various positions are if I start showing you pictures. Yeah. Huh? Okay, all right, cool, I like that, I like that. <laughs> um, all right, let's, uh, I don't want you, let's see, um, let's do a quick recap, this is a real quick one. Stand by. Hi. Yeah. Can I ask one question? Of course, yeah, yeah. Please do. You are gonna recap this, but my it's the third position that i'm kind of confused about okay what about it so like is it the scarecrow is it here <laughs> so this is that area where it begins to merge it's let's say it's the position it's the moment okay you're right you're on the right track you're in the scare the third pool you're in, you're in the scarecrow position it's the moment you begin to pull yourself under yeah, Javi, I have a question. Go ahead. Are there distinct names for these pools or are they more kind of like, you know, a descriptive? Uh, what do you mean? There are names for what? it. Oh, so they, they do have distinct names? Yes, and, and okay. it's, so it's, it's everything we just went over. The receiving position, the first pool. Here, I'll show you this. Uh, is, is that the name, first pool? Yeah, first pool, okay. second pool, third pool receiving position. But again, remember that the starting position is, is you know, has a, a, like a clear distinction, you know, what it is. And then as the barbell goes off the floor, it ventures into the first pool. As the barbell passes 
Uh, the knees, I'll show you guys this, it ventures into the second pool. As the barbell passes mid thigh, it ventures into the, into, it goes up into the scarecrow position, ventures into the third pool. They all merge. It's like boom, 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 right? But for the sake of trying to teach someone the lifts, we, uh, textbooks do their best to kind of chop it apart. Okay, yeah. third pool. So like, I feel like where I always get stuck, kind of going back to Nico, is like when you, when you feel like when you're here, right? It's yeah. always that part of like, you know, like where, what's the cue? Like where are you, are you pulling, like pushing down from your legs and like going up to get you down or what? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. exactly it. So, uh, but let's, let's, let's clear up that, that pulling part real quick. So who, someone tell me, when do we start pulling on the barbell? In the third pull. In the third pull. Yes, but remember, uh, just by going, obviously, one, two, three, the third pull, you're pulling to turn it over, but you should already be pulling prior to. First we pull. End of the second pull. Yes. I thought the first pull was a passive pull. It's yeah. end of the second. When do end of the second? When that's when you activate yeah. yourself. Correct. Mm -hmm. So remember, you need to drive with the legs first. All right. So what what position is that? Let me say. Here we go. Set up. Okay. Drive. Remember those four dots? They connected. Here, drive, barbell start to travel up. And as soon as I finish this extension, then I start pulling. I'm pulling with my delts, with my traps. Everything is engaged because I want this barbell to get, uh, one, stay close with me with the lats. If I wasn't using lats, they would just hang out here. So let me I engage my lats. Here. Those dots align, ankles, knees, hips, shoulders. Straight up. I've driven so hard that the barbell starts to travel up. And then I need to use my shoulders to guide it into the scarecrow position. And that's when you start to actively pull. Here, rise first, then pull. Continue pulling, continue pulling, turn it over, and write it down. I mean, the other thing that really stood out is like the guy's like back is like this perfect like you know 90 degree angle and I feel like I've always been like arching more because there's a natural curvature right you can there is his curvature is it's very subtle um for most it's a more exaggerated um lower lumbar curvature so yes he I mean Toto Kitty is he just has like a massively insane strong midsection that he he doesn't, there's probably no, he just, he's probably practiced years of just maintaining a perfectly flat back because he has the, the trunk strength to do it. Um, the rest of us will have that natural lower lumbar curvature. So if you're watching, even, even how I snap, right? Take a look at my, look at my back. Right? Uh, right? So this would be a perfectly flat back. I don't do that. I, I curve. That's a little lumbar curve. But a quick note on that. You don't want to protrude so much that it's this exaggerated position because in all this pressure, especially with the loaded barbell, the pushing into the abdomen, you need to tuck the rib cage in a bit. I'm engaged here. I still have a little bit of lower lumbar curve. You don't want to overdo that position. That'll put a lot of strain on the, the lower spine and in, in, in the, the stomach. What else? Let's, um, okay, I think we crossed the board. We know, do we know the starting position? Are we comfortable with the starting position? If I showed you a picture, yeah. What about the first pool? Any questions about the first pool? Okay, what about the second pool? 
We know when the second pool begins or more specifically, yeah, yeah. Not where it begins. Uh, maybe I should, we should, let me make a note on that. Sure, we can kind of, I can tell you where these positions begin and end, but more so in the PowerPoint notes, I've given you clear indications of things that happen in that. So when you look at, when you take a look at these pictures, I want you to, to um, view them and try and understand what is going on. And uh, I only wanted you to tell me what position it is, but let's say you come across a picture where you are unsure. Um, leave me a, I'll let you leave me a little description, a little note. If you can prove to me, if I can get an idea of what, how you're thinking, then great. So, okay, first, uh, second pool, the third pool, we just talked about it. Any more questions on the third pool? And then the receiving position. We know what the receiving position is, yeah? How much time do you think you need per question? I mean, per picture? A minute? 30 seconds? Should you know it that quick? I'll give you... Um... This is stressful. <laughs> is this a test? Are we taking a it's test? A test, yes. Okay. You get a point for each accurately, each uh, question you answer correctly. If you feel you need to um, back up your, uh, your, your, your answer with a little description, then, then go for it. Okay, here's the other part of this. Are you gonna submit your answers to me via the chat section? And you're gonna send it to me privately. If you do not send it to me privately, your answers are uh, no longer um, up for points. Wait, wait, wait. So, so do we have to submit it before your session, before the class is over? Yeah, of course. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, so, what if I'm like typing up a really long answer? <laughs> <laughs> You're overthinking it then. You There's, a There's a time cap, Elaine. There's a time cap. Privately through text or privately on here? On here, on here, please. <laughs> But let's say uh, for whatever reason, sure, this doesn't work out or we lose connection or we're not getting it, text it to me. But I think that here is better. There's too much buildup, Javi. Let's just do this thing. Yeah. How many questions, Javi? Yeah, go ahead. How many questions? There's 5 There's five pictures. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Simple pictures. Two of them should be a given. It's mm -hmm. the other three mm -hmm. that you probably need to think about. Just there was ten again. pictures that you showed in the beginning. Are you only are you limiting it to five? Yeah, There's only five. Five five pictures. Okay. I want you to um, tell me. Are we ready? Yes. Wait, how how do we send you a private on here? A private chat? How do we send you a private if message? Click on the three little blue but uh, blue white dots at the top left top right corner. Yep. 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 And you click on it. On the chat, but that's to, yeah. oh, I see. Too. And then, okay. yeah, send yeah, to. It. it should be the John Fitz one, right? Is that who we're saying? Yeah. It is. Got it. Thank you. All right. Cool. Here we go, guys. I'm excited. <laughs> Mute everyone. So that we I don't will. hear the voices, please. Thank Starting you. with you. Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to share my screen. Here we go. I'll give you I'll give you one minute to answer each question. Let's see. I can't see all your faces because of the way Zoom is set up. So I'm gonna give everyone one minute. <clears throat> Here we go. How many are there of you? There's 23 of you. So I have 14 responses right now. Oh. 
Oh, I lost my mouse again. Dang it, why does it do that? All right, give me a second here. Are all my responses in? Let's see, let's see. Wait, wait, wait. Don't look at that. Ah, oh, dang it. Okay. One second. Let me exit this real quick. So you all feel that, can you guys see my screen? Someone look at me, someone give me a, you can see yes. the screen? Yes. You can see me or you can see my, my screen itself? I can Both. screen and you. Oh. Oh. Okay. Um, all right, great. So, uh, Receiving, 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 receiving. Cool. All right. Next up. Nice. Well done. What's this one? Receiving. Is that was that the right answer? Yeah, receiving is the right answer. Good. Everyone got it right. What is this one? Send it to me. I can't see. I them. don't see it. Oh. I don't line. have a different picture. Oh. <laughs> Change. Oh, thanks. It is for team points. <laughs> Pressure. <laughs> Extra team points? This this is for team points. So if you so everyone got the first picture right. It was answered correctly. Um, is everyone submitted? So does that mean we all get one point? Yeah, everyone has one point so far. Okay. All right. Okay, let's see, let's see. Is that everyone? I can't, the, the way the Zoom chat is set up, it doesn't give me a count. I just have to assume that everyone is submitted. All righty, hold on. We have how many in this chat? All oh, right, good. It is the first pool. That is correct. <laughs> I was worried for a second. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> it is the first pool. Uh, let's do a quick recap here. We, we talked about this is the receiving position, right? Obviously, this lifter has, uh, is now underneath the barbell. Elbows are fully locked out. Hips are down into his deepest squat position. First pull is when the barbell goes from the ground to roughly the middle thigh. So this is clearly the first pull. Look at those knees. The knees are back and flared out to the side. Chins are nearly vertical. Shoulders are out in front of the bar. Arms are uh, still, uh, um, what's the word? Uh, uh, engaged or not engaged, um, act, uh, extended, right? She's letting the weight pull, uh, pull, pull the arms down. Um, <laughs> Jamie says she needs to look forward. <laughs> she, uh, she's looking forward. She's looking to get a little elevated. So that's a, well, let's talk about that quickly. Yes, you look forward. Some of us look a little elevated. I like to look more like her. I look, I look a little more like a little higher. Some weightlifters are looking damn near like about the ceiling and that works for them again. Personal preference, whatever you. My think. neck hurts looking at her. Yeah, there's a lot of strain there. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so everyone has two points so far. All right, here we go. Next picture. One minute starting now. What did that? That should not even take you a minute. Give it. Hurry up. Get it in there. All right. 
right, almost there. Let's see. Any review? All right, you guys are right. Another, it's, it's a starting position, right? It's clear. He's, the barbell is on the floor. Take a look at the starting position. Is the relationship of the, the hips to the shoulders. He has that angle. He has a little more pronounced, like lower back curvature, right? Um, knees are pushed forward. Let's see, he, the, where's the balance at in this lift? All in, in mid, it's in the, the tripod, right? Big toe, little toe, heel. Um, and he's in, he's actively pulling on the barbell, right? This is a tight. I mean, he could probably pull cool upon it a little a little bit more, but he's probably he probably just took it for the sake of taking a picture, the starting position. This is um this is Greg Everett. So um all right, cool. Three points. Here we go. Next one. Go. Oh, we're getting some more like answers that are a little more, um, a little varied here. All right, let's, let's talk about this one real quick. One second. So let me look at the answers here. We have quite a, let's see, let's see. Real quick, let me write all this down. Hmm. Interesting answer. Oh, getting the answers changed. <laughs> hmm. Let me um let me read you some of these answers. I think this is this is a good one. Let's talk about this one here. So this is the second pool. And there's some, yeah, there's there's a little bit of uh some varied answers here, uh, but for good reason. Um let's let's see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, someone says, uh, end of first pull going into the beginning of the second. End of first going into the beginning of second. I don't agree with this because this lifter, definitely uh, the end of this is clearly the end of the first pull, uh, but already like probably midway between the second pull. So this is not the beginning of the second pull. Um, <laughs> someone says, oh, I'm confused. <laughs> Uh, okay, and you have some people like back, they finally, they, re they realize later like, oh no, that's, that's not what it is. And th that's why I selected this picture. I think the next picture is kind of just, is just a tad bit, you know, midway confusing. Triple extension starting to go into the third pool. Yes, triple extension though. Um, but I'm looking for the second pool. Not for, if you would have said second pool and then comma, triple extension going into the third. Yeah, absolutely. But no point because it's, that's, that's an excellent description, but it's not telling me what pool it is. Third pool, no, it is not the third pool. Remember the third pool is when you're basically in a scarecrow position and you're starting to turn it over. This is the like halfway of the second pool. I'd say second because she's not in the scarecrow position, but it can be between second and third. 
Yeah, it can be, but I think you're right. You, uh, the third pool is more scarecrow oriented. Extension third pool, again, not the right answer. I want the, uh, even so, yes, she's an extension. Yes, she's preparing for the third pool, but she's still pretty far ahead of the third pool. So the correct answer is second pool on this one, guys. Second pool. Uh, honor system here. So if you got second pool, not the beginning of the third pool, no. Third pool is much later. All right, here we go. Last one. And yeah, for uh, every, uh, you guys are right. This, this is certainly like, you know, she's making her way into the third pool, but definitely the second pool. All right, last one. What is that? Yeah. <laughs> There's only five, yeah. <laughs> so I guess I was just confused between the second and the third because the scarecrow, I thought it was second but I guess it's more of a third. It is, yeah. Remember, third pool is here in this nice tall position. So third is like you're in that position and turning? Yeah, and you're turning it over. The elbows go from the high position to down under to punching up. Okay. And across the board, everyone says third pool before receiving position. Yeah, I like it. I love that description. Third pool, third pool. So he's just about, he's, so he's in this picture, he's pulling himself down. Uh, <laughs> third pool, pretty close to the end of it, almost at receiving, yeah. Uh, Hail Mary, YOLO, help me, Jesus, third pool. <laughs> Especially when it's a heavy lift and you're trying to, you, you gotta be quick. This motion here, he's in this picture, he might look like he's leisurely turning it over, that was a comment from, from, from Charles, by the way. Help me, Jesus, third pull. Because it's exactly that. It has to be so quick. You need to yank on it, turn it over, and punch up. If no matter how high you pull the barbell or how great the positions are prior or how much you know, aggressive leg drive you put into it, if this third pull isn't as just as aggressive or maybe, more, or maybe even more aggressive, then you're not going to make the lift. It will be a, uh, a missed lift. So um, let's take a look at this real quick right here. Where uh, you guys can now tell the differences here, right? And you guys probably knew this prior too. So let's, let's look at this. This is the starting position, obviously. Barbo has left the ground. He's into his first, his first pool. Still in the first pool. Still in the first pool. So that's three pictures here dedicated entirely to the first pool. Barbell is now past the knees and it's made its way to the mid thigh. This is the second pull. Second pull. He's driving. Still the second pull, right? Arms are fully extended. Full triple extension here. Now he's pulling himself under. This is the third pull. Still the third pull. He's pulling himself under. Boom. Locks it out. Receiving position. Nice work, guys. That was fun. <laughs>